Hey guys, welcome to another Creative Tap tutorial. Uh, we're back in Nuke for this one, and I'm going to be showing you um, one of the many methods of removing tracking markers inside of Nuke. Uh, this is a fairly basic way. Um, so what we've got here is a shot of my hand um, just on a table with some blue markers on there, so then you can tra motion track them and put anything from like a scar to a tattoo on the back of my hand, because I haven't got a real tattoo yet. Um, so yeah, First and foremost, what would need to happen here is somebody would need to go in and remove the tracking markers. So I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Now the process is going to be, let's just watch a shot through as we talk about this. The process is going to be, is we've first of all got to get a track for each of them. Or you could possibly get away with getting an average track between four or something. But um, we're going to get a track for each of them. So we can then track a roto shape to that specific area. And then we're going to use the cloning properties of the... Uh, roto shape to actually clone another bit of skin over the top and have it follow it throughout. Okay, so let's dive on in. Um, so let's do this. Let's make, give us some room. Okie doke, here we go. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get my tracker and I want to track each spot. So um, I'm going to track one on this actual tutorial and then I'm going to pause it while I track the rest um, just so I can show you. How, how, how you do it. So I've made this tracker node by hitting tab and type and tracker. I've connected it to the footage. Um, I want to take my properties down to just one, so I'm going to view in one at a time. I'm going to go add track and it's going to pop up with this tracking point. So I'm going to first of all track this bottom one down by here. So let's line that up like so. I think that, so, yeah. Good. And I'm also going to make this box a little wider, just in case there's an abrupt movement. And you can see I've, I've actually started on frame 4. So what, I need, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to come to the top and I'm going to track two starts. It's going to track back four frames and follow it. Now I'm just going to track forward until it gets to the 100 frames area. Um, so you can see, if I move this down, you can see here it's following it. This is the live view, frame by frame, so you can see it's definitely sticking. And you can see it going each one along here. So you can definitely see that this this is following the spot. Now we'll just see if it does it all the way. And hopefully it will. There you go. Now, in terms of what we're doing here, you only need to make sure that, because on, on the right by here, right, I'm going to click stop now um, because I don't want to do any more. I'm only, I was going to do the full thing. The only reason I'm not is just because so it'll, it'll take longer and I want to make this short and brief. Um, now over in the tracker, you could have ticked rotate and scale but for for this instance because we're just tracking individual points and getting position data for each one we're not bothered about that um, so what I'm going to do I'm going to rinse and repeat this process I'm going to create another tracker um, drag it over to this one this time and I'm going to start tracking through and I'm on frame 32 so I'll track backwards first and then I can jump back to frame 32 and track forwards. Now I'm going to pause it while I do this just so I don't take up your time but just track each, each of the spots that you need to on whatever shot you're working with. Um, they could be tracking markers on a green screen, it could be uh, a freckle that you're trying to get rid of on a person or a mole or something but um, go go ahead and do that and then um, I'll join you back once once mine's done. Okay guys, you join me back in Nuke now, where if I connect my tracker, you'll see we've got five tracking points and they all follow they all follow these bits of the hand, okay? So it's all good. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I'm on the first frame. I'm going to get rid of this tracker, just disconnect it out and just look at the footage. Okay, so close this tracker. Now what I want to do is with my um, mouse in the node graph, hit P and create a roto paint node. Let's make sure it's not connected to the tracker and just slot it in there, okay? So what we want to do, first of all, is come over here, grab the ellipse tool, and we want to draw an ellipse around each of these, okay? Try and get it quite tight. Um, so an ellipse around here, an ellipse around this one, an ellipse around this one, and then I think there's one more. around this one. Okay, so great, if we zoom out now, okay, we've got white dots on there. So what we want to do is we want to come into the roto paint and we want to change the source from color to background. So it's just going to show the background through. So we'll do that for all of them. So I'll select them, all shift select and change to background. Okay, so we need to go through one by one 
and I'm just going to rename this to middle point. Okay, and we want to get this middle one, zoom in, and come to clone. Okay, now you can see a little gizmo pops up. If you control or command and click and drag it, so you can place it on top, nothing will happen, you're just moving it around. But if you now click and drag it without um, control or command, you can see it's moving the background of the footage just in here. So what we're doing is we're moving this dot down and we're moving some of this skin by here into this area. And we, if, if we were to go to the right, you can see it's quite dark and it's more saturated. So you've got to be careful where you're selecting. So I'm going to select up here because it goes from quite saturated to quite desaturated. So it just makes sense to go just up here, something like that. I think that's going to be good. And then I'm going to go into the shape and I'm going to give it a feather of 8. should be all right. Maybe a little bit too much. Um, let's go 6. And I'm also going to come back into the clone, move us down a bit more, and go back into the shape, bring us up to 8. There, we'll be good there. Um, so we want to do that for each of them. So ellipse 2, clone. Let's control click, and I'm going to just grab some skin from up here. Something like that should be okay. And then shape, let's feather it by 8. Okay, um, let's keep on working through. This one, ellipse three. Let's go to clone. Let's move control click to move it on top. And then I'm just gonna move it down. Oh, let's move in the roto. Move it down just like so. Just like that. And then feather by about eight. I'm guessing with eight at the moment, but um we'll soon find out. Um then this last one. No, it's two more. So clone and control click to move this to, so it's on top and this one this is going to be a tricky one because it gets darker over here lighter over here lighter here it's going to be let's try something like something like this i think that's going to be all right so shape maybe give this one a feather of 10 or let, no, let's go with 8, 8 should be fine. Okay, cool. And then final one, ellipse 4. Let's go to clone. Control click to drag this and put it on top. And I think I'm going to go this way. Yeah, and shape feather by 8. Right, cheers for sticking with me through that. So if we were to turn this row node off now, yeah, there's a little bit of an issue. You can see it there, so I'm going to feather that one a bit more. Um, so this is something you may may want to just do in on your own um, on your own kind of shot. So I'm going to take this up to about 16. Uh, let's close this out. And this one needs feather in. This one needs feather in. The rest are fine. Um, so ellipse four, five. This one needs about let's go 16 if we can. And this one is 16. Now looking a bit better now. Uh, this one's still a little bright, so what I would do in this instance is I would go in and kind of try and move around the clone. Okay, it's a little bit bright at the moment. Let's try and source another area. So maybe source. There we are. I think that's looking a bit, yeah, it's looking a bit better, more fitting. Okay, so I could probably spend more time on that getting it perfect, but I want to move on to the next bit. So the next bit is let's control and double click your tracker. So you can open up your tracker by here. Well, actually, let's um, let's change our properties bin to two at the same time. So double click the tracker, double click the roto. So we got these two working. Now let's look. Let's do the middle point first. I didn't rename the rest of them. Um, the middle point has got track two. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to go to track two, we want to turn the translate on for that, and make sure we're on frame one, because uh, that's what our reference frame is. If, you're, if you've done it on frame 54, just change the reference frame to frame 54 and stick on that. Um, so what I want to do is come into the transform for the middle point, okay, and I want to right click on the, trans, the translate sorry, in the tracker, right click, copy animation, come up, right click, paste absolute, 
Okay, so what that's going to do, now if I play through a little bit, so I zoom out, I'm going to turn this tracker off and just get rid of it. Um, so as we come through frame by frame, you can see that it's now got this data on there and it's going to follow through exactly where those points are. So if we were to play it, let's get completely rid of it. If we were to play this now, the rest of the points aren't going to be following it through, but the one in the middle is going to be following. Okay, so that's basically what we need to do. You can see the rest of them are screwing up, but let's turn those. If we turn those off, yeah, let's turn these off. Okay, so now you can see it's just going to be that one in the middle. And let's get, let it go through a little bit, just so it does about 20 or so frames. And then we'll, we'll show that to you. There's another thing we're going to do as well. We're going to give it a little bit of motion blur. So you can see us following along. I won't do it for the whole shot. Um, if we come back in, I'm going to turn the motion blur on for this. So the motion that it has, it, it has that motion blur. And let's just check shape and one. Yeah, cool. Right, so basically what you want to do is rinse and repeat this. So I'm going to do one more with you guys, and then I'm going to do all of mine and then show you the final product at the end, just so I don't keep you. Um, so track three, which is track three. Not this one. Let's turn your eyes back on, not this one. Oh, it is this one, yeah. So come back to point uh, frame one. Turn this on. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure the motion blows on for when it gets the motion. Um, track 3, we want to turn the translate on for that, come to transform and right click copy animation, come to the transform for this ellipse, right click paste absolute, okay and that's on, so now this will be following through for the whole shot and that's on there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pause it and then I'll join you back once mine's done. Okay, so you join me back, and I've this is the original shot, and now that I've motion tracked the cleanup onto there, flicking between them both, you can see this is the, uh, ah, I thought I previewed it in. Um, you can see that this is the um, new shot that we've got, where it's all motion tracked to the hand and everything. I could probably spend a little bit more time potentially doing it, um, sourcing maybe better areas, but the technique is... Um, that you use that, that, well, the technique in this instant is that you use that sort of cloning. Okay, so this is the final shot. And now that you've got that tracking data, you can put anything on there, a scar perhaps, a, um, a tattoo, anything like that. So if I flick between the two, you can see they disappear like so. Okay, so cheers for tuning into this tutorial, guys. Um, do give a subscribe and a like if it helped you out and if you enjoyed. Um, give a comment if you can, uh, if you want. Um, also, be sure to follow us on our social media, our Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And hopefully see you guys in another tutorial. Cheers.